What's up everybody, Jay Miller here, and I'm here doing another reflection. One of the things that I was going to do was talk about the idea that people need to start pricing themselves fairly. I hear so many stories about app developers that have to resort to subscription models or people who have to throw ads onto things because they can't compete with the free app or the in-app purchase ridden app or the app, the ad factory that are some games and things out there. And it is a competition for time, but this whole race to the bottom thing's got to stop. Like it's creeping into other markets. Like people are, <laughs> I remember when like, the cost of something, the more expensive it was, the more value we gave it. Like if you think about a car, would you want the car that's like, we were able to cut thousands of dollars so you can get this Honda Civic for $300 brand new right off the lot. I'm sure it would sell a ton, but I think there would also be this uneasiness about what corners were cut to make this happen. And that's the feeling that I get when I hear about all these different apps that are not pricing themselves according to their inherent value. So we're going to look at my prices. I'm actually going to be fully transparent about my prices. Uh, if you notice, I don't put my pricing on the pit website, but I don't do it because I'm embarrassed of the cost. I do it because I I don't want people who are just going to write to me to say, Hey, you should be cheaper than that. Or, Hey, your, you know, your prices are too high. I want people who are first and foremost interested in the product. And then when I give them the price, I can gauge whether or not that price is going to actually work for them because a lot of people just assume, Oh, I've got to make sure that my prices are, you know, low enough for maximum, you know, ability to acquire maximum purchase ability. And for me, I am offering my time. So if I drop my rates, I'm saying that my time isn't worth the amount that I'm charging. So yeah, let's jump into that. Let's talk about pricing, uh, starting with podcast editing up until a few hours ago my rates were $80 for a one hour podcast. That's actually going up. That's going to $120 for a one hour podcast. And here's why I, the way that I edit is a little in depth. I can literally walk you through the process, walk you through the steps. I listen through the entire, you know, audio file. I clip things out as necessary, but not too much. I don't, I don't want to over edit. Afterwards, I remove all silence, all extra reverb. I optimize each vocal channel on its own. I balance that audio and then I export it in a way that is non-destructive. So then I can go back at any time, make corrections, and I do those corrections for free. To me, this process is worth $120. If I said I want someone who's going to give me professional level audio, professional quality audio, I want to pay for professional quality audio. Now you might be asking, yeah, but Jay, like your own podcast audio doesn't reflect that. And you're right. I don't spend as much time on my own audio because the process is so intense and the return on investment for all of that effort isn't there. So I give myself the free treatment or I would say like the, the, the homie hookup. If someone said, Hey, you know, can you hook me up? 
the the level of editing that I provide on my own podcast would be the level that I would give someone the homie hookup on. But if you want professional quality with professional tools, then you have to be willing to pay a professional price. The tools that I use cost hundreds of dollars. And if the software developers for them are doing a good job of, of charging a fair rate, why am I not charging an equally fair rate to use those tools and be able to save podcast hosts a lot of time? So yeah, my podcasting service is $120 for an hour of content. And that's for up to three people on a podcast. Um, cause most people who will pay for a uh, podcast editing usually are working with an interview style podcast or a uh, multiple host podcast where people are talking over each other and you have to be able to make it so that everything is heard as it's supposed to be. Next up is video. Video is $3 per minute. And the reason being is audio, the rule of two for audio is, is for every one minute of audio, it's going to take two minutes of editing. And, and that's a rough rule. Over time, you can get really good at fixing that and making it better. When it comes to doing video, you really can't do that. Video is the idea of looking at audio. Literally, it is, is looking at audio. It is taking the information that is being presented via audio and then adding a video component to it that makes it easier to understand or comprehend or more entertaining to watch. Therefore, there's not just the idea of audio plus video equals, you know, YouTube channel. It is what is the content creator trying to get across? How can I help assist getting that message across in the most clear and concise way possible? That takes a lot of time to not only do, but to figure out. The people that I edit video for, I've been editing video for, for a few months and, you know, at least a few months, one of them I've been editing video for, for almost a year now. And there are still questions that I ask about, Hey, you know, when you said this, were you trying to get this across or, Hey, I tried this thing. Let me know what you think about it. You're not paying just for this thing to be done. You're paying to have a professional come in and provide their insight on your product, which means. I'm charging you at a professional rate. And honestly, $3 a minute isn't really that much. I would, I would think I could probably get away with charging like 10 or 15 if I were just doing video for businesses and things, but that's not my target market. My market is people who are trying to teach other people how to do a certain task. So I want to make sure that their message is as clear as possible. What's next here? We've got transcriptions. So there are a ton of tools that people can use for transcriptions. I'm not even going to go down the list. Uh, maybe one day, well, what am I kidding? I'm not going to give you a list of these. Uh, here's, here's the problem that I have with that. I work with developers. So my transcription rates are $65 per episode as long. And again, this is all for one hour of content, except for the video, which is per minute. If, and this is, this is the best part. If you've ever tried to just put your audio through a transcription service, it sucks. It is so bad. There is, there are times when I'm doing a transcription for a podcast, when I really just feel like I should have just typed it up by hand, the entire thing, because it's going to be more reliable than the transcription itself. Like it takes so long to do a transcription and it is, I don't want to say it's boring, but it is not the most entertaining task to do. That said, it is something that is so important and it's so important because 
now you have search engines that are actually doing their own like speech to text recognition. And if I'm honest, if I know that it sucks already, I want to make that information as accurate as possible because there are people that will rely on those transcriptions to enjoy the content. There are people with disabilities who need to be able to read the content. There are people who are not in a position to where they can have a podcast playing all the time, but maybe they can read a transcript and see what that interview looks like. There are people who are creating the content that can use those transcriptions to make other pieces of content to help other folks out there. You can't sit down and listen to a 20 minute podcast, but maybe you can read a, a quick paragraph on something. The ability of taking what has been spoken and putting it in text form greatly enhances the ability for that content to reach a larger audience, a more accessible, it's a more accessible way to do that. It is a very beneficial tool. That said, it is one of the most mind numbing tasks ever because it's not hard to do, but it takes a long time to do it right. I'm going to skip a few here because I don't really advertise a lot of these things. Uh, we're going to jump down to newsletter marketing. I do email based marketing for, for some brands because I believe that email is still the leader in, in this. I know social media is like huge and there's a lot of money going into advertising by social media, but when it comes to actually reaching your audience, email does it just better than anything else because you can add visual components. You can add references to other information. You can give the target or you can give the person who you're advertising to the ability to review the content at their leisure. It is the most convenient way to get your message across to a large audience. And it scales really, really well. It scales better than podcasting, if I'm honest. But... I really wouldn't want to write all of this stuff out and send it in an email. That that just seems very uh, strange. That said, there's something to say about the ability to let people know the things that you're doing. So the type of email marketing that I do is a is one that's authentic. It's not cookie cutter, carbon copy. It is it is what it is. And it's, it's RSS curation. It is the idea of, there are a lot of things that I've picked up over the past week. There are a lot of things that I've created over the past week. There's a little bit that's on my mind. That's just, you know, burning a hole in there. Let's talk about those things. And I'm able to automate that process so that it's relatively easy. That said, it's still a unique experience and it utilizes a skill set that I've been able to invest time and energy into. So therefore I feel like I deserve to get paid based on my ability to create content that is, although it is just a recap, it is a recap done in a way that's pleasant and makes people excited to read and to engage in. And that's something that a lot of people don't do. They don't try to make these recap emails exciting. They don't try to make them entertaining. They try to make them so that you have a space to serve more ads to someone or get someone to purchase a product. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with getting, you know, telling your story or getting a message across, but there's a right way to do it and a wrong way to do it. And I think that I do the right way. Um, let me know if you get my newsletter and you don't like how I do things, you can always reply to it and tell me that more than happy to hear it. 
like I said, we're going to skip a few of these. The last one that I'm going to talk about is creative brand consulting. And this is $150 a call for the first call in a beer, uh, in a billing period. And then after that, it's $75 for each call. I don't advertise this. This is something that is usually only available to people who are in the pit crew. And if you don't know what the pit crew is, it's our community. If you're interested in becoming a member of the pit crew, you can do so by hitting me up on Twitter and saying, Hey, can you send me an invite to the pit crew? I'm, I'm super interested in learning more about creating things for, for folks out there that, you know, and I, I just want to be able to market it a little bit better. The reason I charge $150 up front is because I want to give them, I'm going to give whoever is booking this time with me the upfront value that I think that they will need, which means I'm not going to just sit there and do a, a quick consultation and say, Oh, you know, I definitely think we can, you can help. We can help each other out. No, we've already done that. We've already had that conversation. At this point, I'm offering advice. I am offering my feedback, my insight, and the information that you get in the subsequent calls are only going to support what was brought up in the initial call. So therefore, the value presented up front is at the highest and then the follow-up calls are just supporting information that helps strengthen the position that you've already put yourself in. It's like building the foundation. You want to make sure that your foundation is as sturdy as possible. You don't want to spend all of your money on the stuff at the very top if the foundation is too weak and can't hold it all. It's a good way to lose everything. But if we can start and provide a strong foundation and then provide more information to give you a solid base to work off of, I feel like that is the best way to do work. Now, like I said, all of these rates, all of these rates are more than what I started at. I'm okay with telling people that I was not charging people what I'm charging them now. A few things have changed. One, I've gotten better at what I do. I've gotten busier because I've gotten better at what I do. I have more clients now. The other side of that is my time is now valuable. The way that I came up with these prices is that when I realized I wasn't charging enough, I, I would be sitting there working on something and saying, is this really worth X dollars? I really don't think so. This is the last time I'm going to work for this amount. But if they want to work with me now, they've got to pay this much. And I understand that by doing this, I am going to price some people out. And I do understand that there are some people who genuinely cannot afford the rates that I'm charging. And I get that which is why it is so important that I charge what I do because you've either got to give your time or your money. If I can't, if someone can't give me their money to save time, then I feel like it is partially my responsibility to help give them ways in which they can optimize the time that they do have. If they don't have the ability to pay for podcast editing, then I feel like it's partially my responsibility to give them advice on how they can make their audio sound as good. I'm not saying that I am the best podcast editor out there, but what I am saying is it is important for me to continue learning and honing my craft. And the only way that I can do that is by working with people who are more skilled than I am. And I can promise you that those people are charging more than what I'm charging to do the exact same thing. Why? Because they're more skilled at it. And if they're not charging more, then 
I'll have that conversation with him when the time comes. But I want people to start charging what they feel they have put into a product. And if you feel like you've put more into a product than you are able to charge for that product, I think that's a good indicator that maybe it's not the right time to release that product. I hope this information has been valuable. Like I said, I'm, I'm giving my rates out because I, I want to be unapologetic about them. And I want more and more people to not be ashamed to tell other people what they charge and to stop trying to race to the bottom with folks because that degrades the overall industry. Whether you're a creative or digital media consultant for developers like I am, or you are a developer working on that next app, or if you are a seamstress who is barely breaking even because fabric is expensive. Charge what you feel like the thing that you've made, the thing that you've done is worth. If you could raise your prices this week, let me know. Let me know on Twitter at KJY Miller. If you want help figuring out what you need to charge, then jump into our, our pit crew. Like I said, if you're interested in becoming a member of the pit crew, DMs are open on Twitter. We only advertise on Twitter for a reason, and maybe that's something that we'll talk about in the future in a future reflection. But I've been talking for 20 minutes. It's already longer than I, I was hoping it would be. I'd love to continue the conversation, though. So hit me up on Twitter, KJY Miller. I'm going to start trying to release these more and more. Um, Interviews are going to decrease, but content as a whole should increase if I'm doing it right. If you like these, again, tell somebody. We talked about that yesterday. Let people know. Give feedback. Feedback is so important. You can do so on iTunes. You can leave me a review. Um, I'm not going to give you anything for it. I'm, I'm asking for the feedback. If you if you don't want to give me the feedback, don't give me the feedback, whatever. But tell me on Twitter. Leave a review. Tell your friends, whatever. Follow Pitt at prod underscore in underscore tech. Follow me at KJY Miller. And of course, if you are looking to get connected with a digital media consultant or digital media brand consultant, there we go. I like that. Let's go with that name. And we'll talk about we'll talk about that as well on putting a label to what you do. But if you're looking for whatever it is that I do, you can uh, find out more about all of those things at productivityintech.com sign up for the newsletter newsletter should be coming out tomorrow and yeah there's going to be a lot of stuff a lot of updates on stuff that's going on so without further ado that's it that's it for me i'm jay miller this has been productivity in tech my pit reflections for august 27th 2019 i hope you've been productive with this have a good day